I'm joined now by the chairperson of the Adams Select Board, Christine Hoyt. First of all, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, you've been on the board now. Uh, we met uh, many years ago, just so people know. We do. I live in Adams. She lives in Adams. Yep. She took my seat on the select board. <laughs> I, I want to make it very clear that I didn't run that year. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> um, and this is your, you're, you're up for re-election next year. Yes, in May. So I am in um, the third year of my first term. But you are not here to talk about your running for re-election. Uh, the first thing we're going to cover in the town of Adams is you guys have been dealing with whether or not uh, to install a 40 R overlay district, which sounds really complicated, but it is not. It's actually kind of basic when you break it down. Uh, give us the particulars of the 40 R district and what it would mean for the town of Adams. Sure. So, um, as as you probably remember from when you were on the board, um, housing stock is always a hot topic in the town of Adams. We have a housing stock that's. Uh, over 80 years old, most of which is uh, in our downtown area that needs to be upgraded. So it's been a hot topic um, for the board to, to look at. So in the spring, we met with Berkshire Regional Planning Commission. We had a workshop to talk about some different options, and 40R is one of them. Uh, 40R is, as you mentioned, the smart growth zoning um, and housing overlay district program that was put forward by the state about 15 years ago. It's um, widely used in the eastern part of the state um, to create some housing in some uh, dense population uh, areas. So what it would mean for Adams, at least what we talked about, is we looked at some of the town-owned buildings that we have and how we could attract a developer to come to Adams and create some housing opportunities in some of those properties. So you've got like Memorial School, um, now 20 East Street, because that will be uh, vacated. That was the community center and youth center. Um, the school district has mentioned that at some point they would like to all be on one campus, which would open Plunkett up at some point, hopefully many years from now. Um, but we're just trying to plan for that type of growth that could happen. It probably streamlines the process a little bit. I know some of the buildings that you're talking about are zoned now industrial or commercial or whatever they may be. Yeah. Um, this sort of opens the door for a developer to come in and say, okay, you can build housing in this building. It's already set. Uh, um, but there are some stipulations that 40R comes with. But the town does keep control, a little more control, if 40R weren't involved. Correct. There are pluses and minuses like everything that happens to anything that you implement in the town zoning-wide. Absolutely. Um, give me some of the positives that 40R might bring in. So 40R, um, it will attract a developer because there are some uh, incentives for the developer. But for the town, there are some financial incentives. So right out of the gate, there's a one-time payment. Um, it's, a, I think, a zoning incentive payment uh, program that depending on the number of units you've identified for your community, you will get so much money. So the maximum uh, amount that you can get, I think, is $600,000. Um, and that's why we took an approach at looking at everything and putting it all on the table and trying to find as many units as possible so that we can max out on that one-time payment um, once we adopt 40R, or if, if we are able to. The other is that the town would get a payment of $3,000 per unit that is developed. So that would happen. That also, 40R also uh, gives the town the ability to um, have a school impact reimbursement as part of the, the zoning overlay district. And I think that's important because you, all of a sudden you add 200 brand new units to a town, it's obviously going to attract people, it's going to attract people with children, especially if it's affordable. Yep. Um, so you're going to have an influx at the school, which, which I think in our school district uh, is nothing but a positive. We know we've right. been losing students. The whole county has been losing students. We have room in the district to, um, to bring in more students, um, and that's what this is about. We would like to attract more families to the town of Adams um, and, and make it uh, affordable for them, but also to have some wonderful housing options. 
And uh, I know, obviously, uh, in Adams, it's been a big deal for a while. Uh, we've had a couple of developers in town who came in and wanted to do a project, and 40i was not installed, so they sort of backed away, and due to other reasons as well. Right. Um, but this is not, it's not a program. You have this going on in towns like Haverhill, town I used to live in. Yep. Blue Collar, Old Mills. Then you have Northampton, Great Barrington, Pittsfield, Marblehead, and yep. suburban towns like Danvers. Uh, Reading. Mm -hmm. it's, it's something that goes on all over the state. Uh, in those towns that it's happening right now, you'll find people who still didn't want to put it in. You'll find right. people who are thrilled. Um, I know the board is debating it. It's been a hotly debated issue in the town. Uh, when will it come up next? What's the next step? Sure. So the uh, board of selectmen did um, come to some consensus back in the spring when we met with Berkshire Regional Planning Commission to move forward with 40R, um, and so we moved it forward to the planning board, and the planning board has, been, has spent the last four months uh, working on a bylaw. Their public hearing process uh, just took place this last month, which put it, everything on the radar that uh, this is uh, what Adams is looking at and what we're talking about, um, and they will be meeting again at the end of September to um, to review the bylaw again and uh, possibly adopt it. If they do, it would then move to the Board of Selectmen to put it on the town meeting warrant um, and maybe a special town meeting either this fall or early spring. So eventually it's gonna be the people who are gonna decide. Correct. You're gonna draft the best, uh, well, you're gonna draft the best warrant possible, you're gonna draft yep. the best plan possible, goes through you people, and then it's gonna go to town meeting and they're the ones who are gonna decide. Correct. Correct. Along with along with 40R, uh, you guys have been implementing a lot of business fr business friendly measures in Adams, yep. uh, which we could use a lot of vacant buildings like <laughs> everywhere again, like everywhere. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about a couple of those. Sure. So um, we are starting to we put in place a couple of years ago the uh, ribbon cutting program um, to help new businesses get off on the right foot to uh, get a little press and promotion about their new business. And it also just creates some nice positive uh, it, it, stories and, and a nice positive vibe that's going on. So that was something we put in place, um, I think in 2017. And since then, we've been trying to work on streamlining the process within town hall. So when somebody comes to open up a new business, who are they meeting with? Um, and then what boards, committees, commissions do they now need to meet with to get all of their permits in place? So with um, Jay Green coming on as our town administrator, he's been really focused on streamlining that process. I think he's playing with the um, language of a, a road map to grand opening or a pathway to grand opening. Um, and right now when somebody comes in and says, I want to open up a business, they are meeting with community development and the town administrator. Uh, last year, town meeting did approve the position of a senior planner. And that position does fall in community development and has helped to walk some of our smaller businesses through that permitting process with um, if it's zoning, if it's planning, um, and in some cases the Conservation Commission, just making sure that they all know what needs to happen and when and when those meetings are set up. So um, everybody in town hall is talking to one another and departments are meeting with new businesses uh, right up front. I think that's great news. Almost a little bit of a hand-holding, walking you right through town hall. It is. Um, so we hope to announce something a little bit more formal in the next couple of months, but we're trying out a process with a couple of uh, businesses that have identified Adams as their new home, and, uh, and hopefully we'll have some announcements on those businesses as well. Give us something a little more exciting. I think we've bored everyone enough <laughs> with very important stuff for yes. the town of Adams and really other towns too. They're going to go through it. Uh, but give us something fun coming up in the near future in Adams. So, well, I don't know if it's fun. Well, it's fun for me. Um, and I don't think any of this is that boring. Um, <laughs> but I'm always looking for people to join different boards, committees, um, uh, commissions. We have vacancies that need to be filled. Uh, so I always encourage people to just get involved in town government. Um, and I'm happy to talk to anybody about what that could look like. Uh, we you talked about town meeting being the ultimate uh, deciding board uh, when it comes to 40R and some other items. We have eight seats that are vacant. We're still a representative town meeting. It's easy to get on the ballot and to get involved um, for that. 
but there are other things you don't have to run for, and I'd be happy to put somebody in touch with um, a, a board or a committee that they are interested in. So that's the stuff that excites me to get more people involved um, and, and have more uh, conversation. But in terms of exciting events, I know that the Adam Suffrage uh, Centennial Committee has been hard at work raising money to put on a six-month uh, festival um, and programming for next year to celebrate the 200th uh, birthday of Susan B. Anthony as well as the 100th anniversary of the women's right to vote. I think so. this is going to take on a life of its own. We have people working like crazy to put it on, yeah. and I think it's going to get bigger than possibly even they imagine. Yeah. And that's going to be a lot of fun coming up. 2020 is the year of Adams. It's going to be incredible. It is. Christine Hoyt is our friend. <laughs> she came in to say hello, and we thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you soon.